Hey everyone, uh, today this is Dr. Mungli. So today I'm going to explain you on pyruvate kinase deficiency. So before I start explaining on pyruvate kinase deficiency, let me review something about uh, energetics coming from uh, glycolysis, that is breakdown of glucose to pyruvate. So one glucose molecule, so glucose is converted to two pyruvate one glucose is converted to two pyruvate and uh, two pyruvates will be converted to two lactate and this is anaerobic uh, glycolysis especially going on in red blood cells RBCs conduct anaerobic glycolysis so when one glucose is going towards two pyruvate so initially there will be consumption of two ATPs uh, on all this so I have another video for you so you can go over there and uh, see the details so initially there is consumption of two ATPs and then there will be production of four ATPs at substrate level phosphorylation so there are two substrate level phosphorylations in glycolysis one is uh, phosphoglycerate kinase catalyzed reaction other is uh, pyruvate kinase reaction in these two reactions you get two ATPs each so you get four ATPs there so that is plus 4 ATPs, you are gaining 4 ATPs there. Now, and also there will be generation of NADH plus H plus. So, 2 NADH plus 2 H plus you are going to get there. So, this the NADH plus H plus comes from glycerol D3-phosphate dehydrogenase reaction. So, overall when one glucose is converted to 2 pyruvate, basically you are losing 2 ATPs there but later you are going to get 4 ATPs and 2 NADH plus 2 H plus. So overall net gain of ATPs if you want to calculate that so you have spent 4 ATP uh, sorry you have gained 4 ATPs there 4 ATPs and you have spent 2 ATPs minus 2 ATPs. So it will be net 2 ATPs that you are getting from substrate level phosphorylation. Now the oxidative phosphorylation in red blood cell do not go on, it is simply because red blood cells do not have mitochondria. So what will happen to NADH plus H plus that are produced here in glycerol D83-phosphate dehydrogenase reaction. So 2 NADH plus 2 H plus that are produced here will be used by lactate dehydrogenase to convert pyruvate into lactate and that's when it is releasing 2 NAD plus. 2 NADH plus H plus are converted to 2 NAD plus. This is done by LDH lactate dehydrogenase. So while two pyruvates are going into 2 lactate, basically there will be release of 2 NAD plus. And these 2 NAD plus will go back into the glycolysis, and that's how glycolysis can be continued in red blood cells. So it means lactate dehydrogenase is doing an important function here to regenerate NAD plus that are much needed by glycerol D83-phosphate dehydrogenase in glycolysis. Okay, after looking into this, so overall when one glucose is converted to two lactate, basically red blood cell will get only two ATPs and these ATPs red blood cell will use to maintain its membrane integrity and whatever the needs of its uh, ATP, whatever the needs of ATPs are there here in the red blood cell and it's going to use that. So it means one gluc uh, glucose is the main uh, energy fuel for red blood cell and it is getting only two ATPs from one glucose. Okay, with this uh, introduction, so let me just move on to glycolysis now. So in order to explain glycolysis, so I'll have to explain, uh, sorry, uh, uh, let's move on to see pyruvate kinase deficiency and its detail. So in order to explain pyruvate kinase deficiency, I really need to explain, uh, write that reaction where exactly pyruvate kinase is participating in the glycolysis steps. So pyruvate kinase enzyme, as, you, as the name says pyruvate kinase, so it belongs to transferase category of enzyme. So this enzyme, it's going to catalyze conversion of phosphoenol pyruvate, phosphoenol pyruvate, phosphoenol pyruvate is converted to pyruvate. And during this process, so basically one glucose, say glucose is 
converted to there are plenty of reactions will go on there and it will be converted to two phosphenol pyruvates and two phosphenol pyruvate converted to two pyruvate done by pyruvate kinase pyruvate kinase enzyme and this pyruvate kinase enzyme it takes two adps here two adps gets into the reaction and two atps are released this is one of the example for substrate level phosphorylation in glycolysis now initially when glucose is undergoing glycolysis it is going to spend two atps minus two atps there and uh, in the phosphoglycerate kinase reaction so it is going to get two atps there that is in the substrate level phosphorylation two atps and it is getting two atps here so that's what we have calculated so the gain is like four atps and 2 ATPs we have already spent so that is minus 2 there so net gain is plus 2 ATPs this is what is the energy that come from glucose to 2 pyruvate now the problem here is what happens if there is a deficiency of pyruvate kinase so let's take this enzyme out so basically you are decreasing this enzyme concentration of enzyme decreased pyruvate kinase enzyme concentration is decreased that's what is the deficiency so when there is a deficiency of pyruvate kinase, so it means there will be lack of generation of these ATPs. So two ATPs that are coming here from this step will also decrease, decrease in two ATPs. So if you take one glucose molecule going into two pyruvate, so pyruvate kinase is deficient, so two ATPs are not synthesized. So overall, whenever there is a deficiency of pyruvate kinase, so that will lead to lack of ATP generation because initially we have spent two ATPs here and you got back two ATPs but in this step you are not getting two ATPs. It means you have spent two ATPs, you got back two ATPs so net ATP gain is zero. So that's what happens in pyruvate kinase deficiency. So in pyruvate kinase deficiency there will be overall shortage of ATPs, there will be decrease in ATPs in red blood cell especially occurs in the red blood cell it can occur in other tissues too but other cells other tissues they dependent they can use other fatty acid for their oxidation they can use ketone bodies but red blood cells cannot use any of these molecules they, they it is dependent only on glucose that's why whenever there is pyruvate kinase enzyme deficient red blood cell won't be able to generate sufficient atps for its needs so because of this what happens because of the deficiency of ATPs so the red blood cell will we won't be able to maintain its membrane integrity so as I said before so to maintain the membrane integrity that is to maintain the pumps especially the sodium potassium pump so it needs uh, red blood cell needs ATPs to do that so if the ATP generation is decreased here because of the pyruvate kinase that is deficient which is participating in the conversion of glucose in so phosphenol pyruvate into pyruvate so red blood cell will be having deficiency of ATP so it means membrane integrity won't be maintained so it that means what so when there is deficiency of ATP is there so sodium potassium pump it doesn't work efficiently because of this what happens so red blood cell will swell so membrane integrity when it is affected so water will start moving into the red blood cell so there will be imbibition of water so osmotic effect occurs so water will accumulate within the cell because of the sodium potassium pump which is not working fine here because of this what happens so red blood cell will become big and it can burst open so when the red blood cell burst opens so whatever the hemoglobin is there in the red blood cell that will come out so hemoglobin will come out of red blood cell into the blood okay so this hemoglobin initially it is uh, conserved by haptoglobin but later it will appear in the urine leading to hemoglobinuria so because of this pyruvate kinase deficiency will lead to hemolytic anemia hemolytic anemia that is what is one of the uh, sign that you see in pyruvate kinase deficiency in fact pyruvate kinase deficiency is the most common cause for hemolytic anemias that are seen among all the enzymes uh, participating in the glycolysis if we take all the enzymes of glycolysis and their deficiencies pyruvate kinase deficiency is the most common deficiency leading to hemolytic anemia 
Now, apart from hemolytic anemia, what else you are going to see in pyruvate kinase deficiency? So, hemolytic anemia, basically the anemia here, anemia is decrease in hemoglobin concentration of the blood. So, hemoglobin levels are less, so because of this what happens, oxygen carrying capacity of the blood decreases and that will lead to tissue hypoxia and because of the tissue hypoxia, so the electron transport chain will decrease its function because oxygen is not available sufficiently. This will lead to lack of energy, lethargy, uh, breathlessness. So all these signs of uh, hypoxic effects basically, the anemic effects will be seen. So even the patient becomes breathlessness even on mild exertion. Okay. So what kind of anemia you see here? So it's an hemolytic anemia but anemia will be mild to moderate mild to moderate hemolytic anemia mild to moderate anemia is seen in pyruvate kinase deficiency why mild to moderate it's because in pyruvate kinase deficiency there will be increase in 2 3 bpg 2 3 bisphosphoglycerate why there is increase in 2 3 bpg in pyruvate kinase deficiency and that is because when phosphoenol pyruvate is not converted to pyruvate, phosphoenol pyruvate will move back into 2 phosphoglycerate, then 3 phosphoglycerate, and 3 phosphoglycerate to 1 3 bisphosphoglycerate. And 1 3 bisphosphoglycerate will go into formation of 2 3 bisphosphoglycerate. And this 2 3 bisphosphoglycerate it is going to shift oxygen, disso oxygen dissociation curve of hemoglobin towards its right side. So it leads to right shift right shift in the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve right shift means there will be more release of oxygen from hemoglobin so hemo oxygen is released efficiently because of this uh, what happens so although there is anemia here but whatever the hemoglobin that is present in the red blood cell it is able to release oxygen sufficiently to the peripheral tissue that is why the anemia that you see here in pyruvate kinase deficiency is mild to moderate now what all the other signs that you are yeah, you are expecting to see here in pyruvate kinase deficiency so it is mild to moderate anemia increase in 2,3 bpg leading to right shift in the oxygen dissociation curve and also there will be positive family history family history will be present here and because pyruvate kinase is an autosomal recessive condition so some other members in the family may be affected by pyruvate kinase deficiency okay now, if you compare pyruvate kinase deficiency with uh, glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency, so G, that is G6PD, G6PD deficiency. So, glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency is a severe, it leads to severe hemolytic anemia and that will have hinge bodies, hinge bodies, hinge bodies are precipitated hemoglobin molecules in red blood cell. Whereas in uh, pyruvate kinase deficiency, you don't see hinge bodies, no hinge bodies here, no hinge bodies, that's one of the sign, means not, not really sign, but when you compare this with the glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency, so here you don't find hinge bodies. So these are some of the signs that you need to look for in pyruvate kinase deficiency. So it leads to mild to moderate hemolytic anemia, increase in 2,3 BPG leading to right shift in oxygen dissociation curve no hinge bodies and positive family history and that is autosomal recessive. I hope you understood pyruvate kinase deficiency. Thanks for watching. I will come up with the next video sometime again. Thank you.